we're doing something new, a top five movie list. Welcome back, everybody. It is time to lock down a top five Lovecraftian films based on my personal choices and favorites from the genre. Halloween is just in a few days, and this is something that I've been wanting to do over the past couple Halloweens for about two years now. I've been wanting to do this little top ten, top five Lovecraftian-themed film genre list video. And I've put it off because I still had to do some homework. I still had to watch some of the films on the list that I wanted to go over and get my thoughts together and... Then I put it off, and then I put it off, and, and here we are two years later with an idea that I am finally putting into progress. And now you are seeing the completion of it, so I'm hoping you guys enjoy. If you do, make sure to leave a like, make sure to subscribe. We do a lot of unboxings on the channel, toy unboxings, different things, a lot of TCGs. So if you enjoy that type of content, or if you enjoy what we're doing here today, let me know in the comments below. As you guys know, I'm a big Lovecraft fan. I've read a lot of the books from HP Lovecraft, and... I love watching Lovecraft films. Honestly, there's not enough of them out there. It's kind of a hard genre to really hit precisely on. And hopefully with some of the stuff I'm going to be talking about today, we can kind of pinpoint what a film should be looking for when it becomes a Lovecraft film. So I picked out 20 of my favorite Lovecraftian films that I've seen and watched, put them into a list as you can see here. These are just 20 out of probably many different things and many different films that people would regard as Lovecraftian. But these are my top picks, my favorites, and I'm gonna be giving you guys today my top five personal choices for the best Lovecraft films that we have available right now. So personally, how am I breaking down what qualifies as a Lovecraftian film? Well, we're gonna be using something that I call the Eldritch Scale. This is gonna be going over five main points that help us determine if this is a good Lovecraft narrative or vibe to the whole thing. Qualifications that we're gonna be looking for in the films we're talking about today, and this is gonna be out of like a five-star rating system or the five-star Eldritch scale, one of which is gonna be, does the story, does the movie have mystery? Is there solving a mystery? Is there something to be discovered? Is there a mystery that the audience is trying to solve? Two. There's got to be cults. Yeah, uh, Lovecraft is known for the Cult of Cthulhu, stuff like that. There's cults and all sorts of things in a lot of his writings. It's a well-known uh, trope that he uses quite a lot, and a lot of filmmakers and other writers do as well when talking Lovecraft. Three, unimaginable or unknowable horror. We're talking the cosmic horror, the things that you just can't either describe, you can't even begin to understand or know, or things that you just don't want to know or don't want to imagine. Classic, classic Lovecraft. Four, you gotta go a little insane when you're talking about Lovecraft. So we're looking for insanity, things happening to the mind, minds breaking, brains breaking, people going mad. And five, does it match the vibe of Lovecraft? Does it match the tone of Lovecraft? And also chartered in with this one is gonna be like, is the movie in general good? If a film hits all five of these, then it's a five out of five Lovecraft score for me or the Eldritch Scale score. And that's what I'm gonna be using in conjunction to what I personally find the best as well. So I'm not gonna be talking about every film on the 20 film list. If you wanna check it out, I'll leave a link to my little uh, letterboxed list of all the films that I'm going through today. But I do wanna make note of a couple. These are films that I just want to give note to or clarification on or what I think about them if they find odd or weird to be in the list. Number one, Underwater. If you've seen the film, you know why it exists in the list. Uh, it's a good film. It's not a great film. There are some issues and it doesn't necessarily hit all the Lovecraft points, but man, what a cool ending to see. Number two, The Lighthouse. Now this is going to be a hot take. I like the film. I don't love the film. And it doesn't really feel like it's justified in being fully Lovecraft like some people like to claim it is. It gets a check for vibe, it gets a check for madness. That's about it. But if you like a slow burn, artsy project with fantastic actors, it's gonna be enjoyed by you. Another one is Mandy. Now, I went back and forth on if this one should even be included on the list. There's cults, there's madness, but is there really a Lovecraftian nature to the film? Eh. I'm not so sure, but the tone and the look of the film would look great in like a high budget Lovecraft film for sure. And lastly, Glorious. 
Lovecraft and comedy? Well, it works and it's a lot of fun and there's a ton of Lovecraft nods, but I wanted to mention it because it's a newer film and it's not very well known yet. And I think it deserves more attention. Lovecraft fans should definitely check that one out. All right, we're getting close to my top five picks, but first I wanna go over the honorable mentions. These are films that didn't make it into my top five. They would have easily been in a top 10 or they would have been just right at the edge of getting into the top five, personal favorites of mine, but there are other ones to talk about for the top five. First in the honorable mentions, we've got Resolution and The Endless. Both these movies go hand in hand since they reside in sequence and in within the same universe. It's smart, well-crafted, and low-budget directing that really just shows how much inspiration and passion went into the crew making this film. While not perfect films, there's plenty for Lovecraft fans to be happy with in these. Second one is Annihilation, an extremely well-crafted movie based on the book of the same name. This movie was insane to watch in theaters, pretty much by myself with a booming surround sound, and those crazy intense scenes were a huge high point of this film. It's one movie-going experience I will not forget. Vibes of Lovecraft and other dark, otherworldly tones, with tons of psychological thoughts and beautiful cinematography. It's a huge recommendation of me to go watch this one if you haven't yet. Lastly, Event Horizon. This movie's so good and immensely dark and immensely twisted. Sam Neill is in his prime movie days and he plays his role just so effectively. This one almost made it into my number five spot. It was extremely close along with another film, but I'm gonna go into that in just one second. Another recommend here, it's a crazy watch. It's super good. All right, we're at my personal top five Lovecraft in films, let's go into it. Number five is In the Mouth of Madness. In the 1994 John Carpenter film, which by the way, this director is legendary for his Lovecraft themes. An author brings maddening creatures to life through stories, and our main protagonist goes to investigate the old creepy town where the author disappeared. The movie then runs rampant with cosmic horror, and it is fantastic. Sam Neill fits his acting into this film so well, which is why I was debating between this one and Event Horizon. I think this film edged into the number five spot, just because it hits more of the Eldritch scale points than Event does. For starters, mystery, bam, nails it through the whole film. Cults. While not fully bringing in a tribe of cult members, it goes more into the villain's ideals as more cultish thinking. Now, while John Carpenter goes crazy for monsters and special effects in his film, it's definitely still untapping into the unknowable horror aspect, especially with just the sheer amount of creatures brought to life in the film. Does it have a Lovecraft feel? Yes, absolutely it does. The vibe is there and John Carpenter knows how to master it. This hits on many inspirations from like the Dunwich horror and mainly even like Pickman's model. Now, while the ending may be a little bit tropish, I think the overall film really serves to be a great look at what Lovecraft films can be. Since I can't give it a full point for cults, it's getting a 4.5 out of five on the Eldritch scale. Number four, The Thing. Of course it's on here. Hey look, it's John Carpenter again. The Thing from 1982 is a classic horror movie that catches amazing Lovecraftian vibes the whole way through. The isolated Antarctic. A disturbing creature takes the form of other known humans while terrorizing the small crew of workers that try to survive and destroy it. The whole who can you trust and who is the creature mystery, all the while making the dwindling crew go insane. This is a fantastic concept for its time. It is a staple in horror cinema and Lovecraft. The creature in its disturbing, ambiguous form nails unimaginable horror on its grotesque contorting head. But no cult points can be awarded here. But overall, I don't think it's needed and this is peak Lovecraft cinema. Four to five on the Eldritch scale. Okay, number three, The Void. A cop finds a bloody man on the road and brings him to a small staffed hospital, but when the building gets surrounded by cloaked figures and people start transforming into horrific monsters, the people inside have to try and stop the madness at its roots before it's too late. I remember watching the trailer for this relatively lower budget indie film and thinking this was gonna be something very unique to Lovecraft fans. 
and I was not let down. This movie was wild. It's a bloody, gory, off-the-wall creature feature with a mind-bending, otherworldly story. While the acting is not the best and the plot may be a little bit too ambiguous for some, I've heard people are split on liking this one. The film makes up for it with incredible makeup effects and a phenomenal visual tone for a viewing that will not easily be forgotten. It's Lovecraft through and through. It's got mystery, it's got cults, it's got insanity, unimaginable cosmic horror, done. Lovecraft vibes for days, and in my opinion, a great film. We got a five out of five on the Eldritch scale and a movie you should definitely check out. All right, we're getting closer to the end and we've got number two, The Color Out of Space. A meteorite crashes into a remote family farm that starts to infect and transform the lands and the minds of those nearby. The Garner family must face the corruption while trying to save their home and their very lives. This one is an awesome adaptation of Lovecraft's short story by the same name. Finally, a movie that just does its best to go off of the narrative established by the author in the book. Now, there are still plenty of differences, but I think this is the closest we've come so far to do that by the book approach to Lovecraft. It's creepy, filled with lots of body horror and it's a ton of fun. That's mainly because of Nicolas Cage doing his very best insane Donald Trump impersonation. You know, I've had it with your drama, Lavinia. So do me a favor and get the f out of my sight, okay? No, no, actually, I'll save you the trouble and get the f out of yours. What is the meteorite? What is it doing to the land? Mystery? Check. Unimaginable horror? Check. Insanity is at its peak with Nicolas Cage at its helm. The Lovecraftian vibes are here and the look is visually amazing. From the lighting to the effects, they all look fantastic and they give a lot more weight to some very memorable and intense scenes. No cults again here, but that's nothing to fret over. Go of your Nick Cage and Lovecraft itch scratched all in one film. Four out of five on the Eldritch scale. All right, we're here, we did it. We are at the number one top spot for my favorite pick of a Lovecraftian horror movie. It is The Empty Man. It's a very recent, under-marketed, and under-released 2020 feature film that got pushed to the sidelines during lockdowns and skipped its uh, theatrical debut. Started to make waves through word of mouth and a lot of movie reviewers online, getting mainly positive reception and a small following that helped it get pushed into a lot more of the larger streaming platforms. The Empty Man was one of the biggest surprises for me back in 2020. And this film isn't even really being talked about as being Lovecraft, but more so as just a solid suspense mystery derivative that kind of just stood out among the schlock horror that's come out over the past few years. But I'll be honest, the only thing I kept coming back to was how this movie did Lovecraftian horror right. The movie felt like an homage to several different genres, but let me talk to you about why I think it fits so perfectly in this top five. The movie is about a group of teens from a small town that begin to mysteriously disappear. The locals believe it is the work of an urban legend known as the Empty Man. A retired cop investigates and struggles to make sense of these stories and then discovers a horrific secret that puts his life and the lives of those close to him in grave danger. Now, I don't want to spoil the twist or the ending, but here's a little rundown of how it hits on the points on the Eldritch scale. First, we're gifted with an extremely ominous opening scene that perfectly sets up what kind of an entity the movie is throwing at us. This is a purposefully ambiguous malevolent being that plays with your imagination throughout the whole film. From the head-scratching opening scene to the final confrontation, the movie balances what we can create in our minds and what we simply can't understand about this creature. The movie itself gives us enough info and certain details pertaining to this thing, but I feel this leaves just enough questions for this to be unrelentlessly a unimaginable, unknowable cosmic horror. The main protagonist is dead set on solving this riddle, which entangles him into a world of dark secrets, rituals, and a perfect showcasing for this top five list of cults. And I love the spin they took with this cult. It's not your Cthulhu level dagger wielding, bloodletting cultist. This is, this is like real world Scientology delving into like mind type stuff. And since we're dealing with more of a psychological cult that feeds into mainstream ideas of like ritualistic ways of thinking and how the mind can influence and bring power to the world, 
yeah, some minds are gonna break. Insanity, checked. Lastly, the vibe. It's dark, it's moody, it's intense. Hues of blue to green shade into blacks and grays of some very well thought out scenes throughout. Some scenes are particularly reminiscent of other films like Midsommar and The Resolution. Lower budget, good writing, and passionate directing can make for some fantastic pieces of work. And this one falls right into that category. For me, I felt the Lovecraftian tones throughout. Others may disagree and want that kind of full push of the Lovecraftian spirit in their films, but I don't mind subtlety as long as it's done right. Don't get me wrong, a full-blown cosmic horror like The Color Out of Space is awesome. But when I think of Lovecraft's works, there are many different ways in which he wrote his horrors. Some like The Call of Cthulhu are drawn back, leaving vivid memory-like quality that let the reader's mind fill in when they must. Or we have the Mountains of Madness or the Shadow over Innsmouth that give descriptive details that draw the reader into solving the mystery with the characters. Then we have a fantastical version like the Dream Quest of an Unknown Kadath in which a more bold vision is enacted with its storytelling. All are valid versions of how HP went about his work. Likewise, the filmmakers and the writers can take any road that fits them best and establish their own unique narrative to Lovecraft horror. And that's why the top pick for the best all around Lovecraft movie for me with a five out of five Eldritch scale is The Empty Man. What'd you guys think of the list? Have you guys seen any of these before? Which one was your favorite? Leave a comment below and let me know. And be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more unboxing content. Or if you enjoyed this kind of movie review list style content, make sure to share this around and maybe I'll do more of it in the future. All right, thanks for sticking all the way to the end. Don't miss Sunday's video, Go Goes Crazy Bones Ghosts. That's gonna be our final little Halloween special to wrap everything up. That's at 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and we will see you guys in the next video.